we know we are the diabetic capital of the world. So probably because of the higher incidence and prevalence of diabetes, our vessels are usually multiple stenosis as well as diffuse, which you don't see in the Caucasian. And second is because of the diabetes, probably an accelerated hypertension, our coronary artery disease are very, very aggressive. So if you see, our onset of coronary artery disease are a patient who end up in an ICU is even in a younger age group, which we see as an involvement in younger age. And also, unfortunately, we have higher incidence in women. So this makes us a disease which would lead us to refractive angina and heart failure. Because of the aggressive nature of the disease, in spite of medication, in spite of angioplasty, and in spite of bypass surgery, there is still a big group of population known as this refractory group. What should we do? And that is what we are going to discuss here right now. So what is the concept of EECP? Is it new or is it old? Well, I would say it started in almost in 80s. And everybody here would understand what is an IAPP, intraatic balloon pump. And every intervention center would have an IAPP in the hospital. Why? Because it can able to put a wire and they can position a balloon close to the heart and they can pump the blood into the coronaries. So it is synchronized with your heart rate, I mean it's your EZT. So when the heart is in the systole, the bladder which is in the aorta will deflate. And the diastolic it inflate, pushing the blood into the coronaries. But unfortunately we may not be able to leave this uh, bladder into the iota for a longer period of time. But every physician would fantasize what if I can leave it for a longer period of time. It can push a lot of blood into the coronaries and it can form a lot of collaterals. Well, that is why EECP was introduced. Now you have a concept which you can give the patient for a prolonged period of time which can able to do what the intraatic balloon can do in ICU in outpatient setup which can tremendously improve the blood flow to the myocardium. So this basic slide shows how do you manage patient with angina. To make it very simple, it's very simple, like I say, supply and demand. You have to increase the supply, you have to decrease the demand. This is how you treat the patient. If you want to increase the supply, you have to go to the bypass or angioplasty. If you want to reduce the demand, dilate the vessel so the heart can easily pump into the vessel, you have to do your medication. That is why you have medication and intervention together. What if I can do both together? I do increase supply, I do decrease demand. That is why the counterpulsation, EECP, that's what the treatment does for your heart. So what it does, the patient comes for 35 one hour session. So he lies down on a treatment table. You put three sets of cuff in the lower limb. One in the lower calf, lower thigh and upper thigh region. And exactly during the diastolic phase, the cuffs all inflate. So if this is a phase where your aortic wall is closed. So all the blood you push back in a retrograde way, it's entered into the coronary circulation with higher velocity and pressure. The pressure you are giving in the lower limb is almost 300 millimeter mercury pressure. So you got to have two compartments, not one compartment, one is an arterial, another one is a venous compartment. So the venous compartment increase the venous return, increase the blood flow into the myocardium. So it's prime starry mechanism, it can stretch and contract better, increase the cardiac output. The arterial side is going to enter into the coronary venous, coronary circulation with higher perfusion pressure, velocity and flow. This creates something like a coronary vascular hypertension. So stimulate the collateral into the dormant myocardium and also form new vessels. So the next phase is deflation. Deflations are timed exactly when the heart is going to contract, your cups deflate. So it massively reduces the peripheral vascular resistance. When the peripheral vascular resistance is reduced, the heart can easily pump the blood into the periphery so that the requirement for oxygen is less and it can easily contract. So that is what it called, it reduces the cardiac workload. So this is what the treatment looks like and the patient lies down. It's a very comfortable treatment. Patient can come, even patient with 90 years with high comfort level, without any discomfort, they can able to complete the 35 sessions. Now the immediate question rises to everybody's mind is, yes, I put the bladder in a leg. How do I know that blood flow into my coronary artery is increasing? Is it just a postulation or a hypothesis or is it really happening? This is what done from one of our colleagues when we are doing in Utah, Michael. He's a young interventional cardiologist. He said, let me put my wire into the coronary and measure during the EECP procedure. This is what it does. If you look here, so this is a normal uh, arterial pressure valve, systole, dichroic dots, down slope, that slope. So when I give a pressure of around 100 millimeters and slowly increase to 150 and then I go to 200, then I go to 250. You see one thing here, 
your systolic amplitude is coming down and you can see the small blood started coming in 150 and become huge. This is what you see in a cathelar pifuta intraatic worm pump. And this is exactly what you are seeing in EECP in a cathelar that your diastolic pressure is increasing. So this is what we call as diastolic augmentation. It's a direct evidence to show you are increasing the blood flow into the coronary arteries. So here because my presentation on patient selection I would say if you can able to achieve a pressure of more than 200 in a patient definitely you are going to increase the blood flow into the coronary arteries. But if you are not able to achieve the pressure less than 200 it's just a placebo effect. So the pressure applied is directly proportional to the amount of velocity, flow and pressure you are increasing in the coronary arteries. So this is again an intracoronary droplet showing a significant increase in pressure when you put EECP and when you stop EECP you can see it's 1 is to 2 ratio, it is unaugmented pressure wave, it is augmented diastolic. So it exactly depends upon your cup inflation pressure. So what is the mechanism of action? Second, now you have something called neovascularization angiogenesis, second it is improved endothelial function, third it is a training effect, it's just like what you do in exercise. And fourth is neurohormonal decrease and oxidative stress is reduced. So what is angiogenesis? A couple of decades before, angiogenesis is simply defined as in increase in blood flow because of formation of new vessels. And then slowly it becomes a chapter in every cardiology textbook. Now itself is a monogram. You have a textbook on angiogenesis. The idea in angiogenesis is can we able to increase the blood flow to the myocardium without intervention or mechanical manipulation of coronary arteries. It was not done before. Your wet job, your gene study are all shown some promising but nothing has shown a significant improvement in blood flow in the myocardium. And that is why this paper when they presented God appeared in American College of Cardiology first page. So when there is a procedure where you can increase the myocardial blood flow into the ischemic area without you landing up in an interventional setup. Well, we know this is another one in the 80s when they did the dog model you know, let's see how much blood flow and collateralization has happened in the dog when they give a counterpulsation for 15 days. But the researchers who are like said, when I was here they said, unfortunately we human are not as good as a dog heart because this collateralization can never happen in human beings. It's not as much as what dog or like a pig that can develop collaterals. Human development of collateral is very, very slow and it's not as much as what you expect. So these are the studies from 1992 to 2003 which show how EECP can improve the perfusion. And in our own experience, my two studies which is done on 2002 and 2003 has significantly shown the improvement in myocardial perfusion in patients with ischemic myocardium. And this is our project which has given them here in the US by FDA to show can you be able to show myocardial improvement in blood flow by EECP by a non-invasive assessment and we picked up nuclear perfusion scanning. <coughs> And this was published in American College of Cardiology in 2002 and it is useful for FDA approved and every textbook quoted this paper to show evidence of increased myocardial perfusion. So here we took uh, 175 patients, a multicentral trial, more than 17, 17 uh, centers include Europe and US they took part and they showed in 83% of the patients in EECP they have a significant improvement in myocardial perfusion observed by naked eye, by a blind uh, observer. And this is again, there is another study we did in Chennai and which is also appeared and present in American College of Cardiology which show in patients with ischemic, myop ischemic cardiomyopathy with low ejection fraction which have symptoms of heart failure that we are able to show that we can able to increase the myocardial perfusion by EECP treatment. Here is another one you can show. The patient EFS improved and also you can simply see the improvement in myocardial perfusion in this patient. You can see from this diagram and this diagram, visually you can able to appreciate the increase in myocardial perfusion to the ischemic area. This shows that something is happening in the myocardium can able to promote the new muscle formation that we call as angiogenesis. And the final thing came in 2010 by a German group who does only research on arteriogenesis and they clearly show by angiogram, by pre and post angiogram on EECP. They show a control group and patient with active EECP is in active EECP they show a significant improvement in collateralization and sham there is no change in the collateralization. So let us put the postulation of mechanism of EECP together. 
So when you put a cup in the lower limb and you inflate and deflate the cup, which is synchronized to the heartbeat or synchronized to the ECG for 35 consecutive days, what really happens is because of the increased flow, pressure and velocity which is appearing in a coronary vessel, stimulate new vessel formation. And this new vessel has shown to increase the blood flow to the ischemic myocardium. That's a myocardium which requires a blood flow. And once the myocardium received the blood flow, it started getting its more blood supply and started contracting better. So we have shown increase in myocardial blood flow and increase in contraction of the ischemic myocardium. It shows improvement in ejection traction. So your ejection traction would improve with EECP. And also, as an exercise training FI, you cannot make a patient who's angina to run, but EECP is like a passive exercise training for them. The patient is lying down on the EECP treatment bed, his heart rate is controlled, his heart rate is not going to go up. And because of the increased pressure we are giving, the patient's heart believes as if he is doing exercise and it gives all the benefit what you achieve by exercise. And that's why it comes the endothelial. Because the blood flows everywhere to the body. It is not only to the coronary artery, but to every organ. So one of the biggest organ in the body is endothelium. And because this endothelium is stressed because of the increased blood flow, it releases various hormones. And one of them is your VEGF, vascular endothelial growth factor. And that is the main cause for stimulation of angiogenesis. And also it shows to improve the endothelium. And we know now endothelium is one of the factors which determine your future mortality and morbidity, irrespective of your coronary anatomy. So it might have a decreased hospitalization and you can prevent your future uh, heart attack by just doing an EECP treatment for 30 patients. And this is to support. And after we finish in US, and there was a lot of interest in US, just look at Indian data, because in India it seems to be EECP is given much earlier than what they did in US. Here some centers they give EECP when the patient refused to go for interventional procedures. Because as insurance is not covered in US, there are a lot of patients who just refuse to go off bypass or angioplasty just because they cannot afford to go in. So when we took such a kind of patient from India, more, more than 500 patients, we did pre and post echo on them. And it was published in American College of Cardiology. And it shows the ejection fraction from 42 increased up to 53. There is a significant 20 to 25% improvement in ejection fraction. And it clearly shows what, why does the EF improve? Because there is no change in the end diastolic volume, but there is a significant change in end systolic volume that clearly shows the EF is improved because of increased contraction of your myocardium. So it shows both the methods there is a significant improvement in EF. And we see the increase in EF in patients with greater than 35% EF as well as patients with less than 35% EF. And this increased left ventricular ejection fraction is mediated predominantly by decrease in end systolic volume. So the conclusion is the improvement is because of increased contraction. That is what we want to achieve in a patient with heart failure. So to put the summary together, because it improves the contraction of the left ventricular uh, muscle, it is going to improve the ejection fraction and it has shown to decrease the BNP level because right now we are using BNP as a marker for seeing the prognosis of patient with heart failure. So decreased BNP level shows your stress on the left ventricular myocardium is reducing. And also it has to show an increase in nitric oxide, increase in vascular endothelial growth factor and decrease in endothelium. This shows your endothelium is start responding to your exercise or it's to your EECP. So your endothelial function is improving. So that might have a long term outcome on a patient which can able to prevent an MI or may able to prevent a hospitalization because endothelial function is very important in predicting your outcome. So who are all the patients who can go for EECP? Well, as I said, patients with heart failure who have reduced ejection fraction, who have poor quality of life, who are not responding to an optimal medical management, diet and other lifestyle management are the candidate for EECP. Number second, as I clearly said, patient with, patient with diabetes who have a high risk of restenosis and graft occlusion. So if you have a patient who has already gone for interventional procedures, who have graft occlusion or uh, restenosis, they might not be a good candidate for a second procedure, probably they are older or they have other comorbid illness. 
So this may be the good candidate for the ECP treatment. And third is, your intraventional nurse would do an angiogram and they found out you have a very severe LV dysfunction or they may find out your vessels are not graftable and even if you do a plasty, its multiple vessels are involved. So probably you might not be able to plasty it or bypass all the vessels. So these are all the candidates for EECP. And also patient with any patient with ischemic or dilated cardiomyopathy with poor quality of life. To summarize, your refractory patients for angina and heart failure or patients who refuse to go for interventional procedures. These are all the subset of group who will definitely improve by EECP. So before going for EECP, you should document the patient have ischemic symptom and they should also have a poor quality of life. So this all here, number one, the chronic coronary artery disease patients who are refractory to medication not amenable for interventional procedure. Number second is your PTC and bypass surgery is not contemplate, contemplated on this group of patients because of various reasons I just listed out. Or preparation for revascularization. Some of the treatment centers, I will just focus you on one study which shows patients who are posted for bypass surgery, they can go for a pre-EECP procedure to stabilize the